All right, let's get this party started. All right, we're live in studio to talk about good technology. So there's still some more people signing in. I apologize to those. It looks like GoToWebinar is um, just getting abused by the entire world today. So we're getting a little bit of lag in both the audio and, um, or it could be the video, who knows, right? Um, but we're, we're definitely having some issues with people saying they still can't get on. We are recording this. So for those of you who don't make it in, you're going to be watching this on replay, um, or we can obviously do it again when the time is right. But other than that, welcome. You're here. You made it. Um, you're home. Your feet are up and you're relaxed. We're going to talk about some technology today. We're going to have uh, hopefully a lot of fun and see some nerdy things. Uh, a couple things as always. Um, uh, questions, use the chat feature, ask us lots of questions. Uh, we will answer them towards the end. Um, and then we will definitely get through those. Hopefully by then we got more people signed up. Um, okay, today's nerd shirt, if you're taking notes, is brought to you by the Millennium Falcon. Um, I mean, arguably the most awesome spaceship to ever fly in the movies, right? I mean, come on, let's be clear with ourselves. I mean, it had it all. It had, I think, four amazing features. It was fast, it had guns, you need those in space. It had room to smuggle cargo, and it had an entertainment center. And if you weren't careful, you could lose your arm to a Wookiee. Um, but this is not unlike the product we're putting on the bench today, which I think has four amazing features. You can switch, mix, stream, record video, all with the fewest buttons possible. But if we step back for a moment, I think we'll realize that right now, uh, in today's climate, with everything that's going on, we've got teachers and professors and people holding classes online with webcams and PowerPoint, and some of these people for the first time ever. And, and this is fine for the pinch we're in, but at some point, we're going to need to grow their ability to remotely teach better. We need to give them access to overhead cameras and document cameras. We need to be able to let them seamlessly decide when to switch from one camera to the next, and then we need to stream it and record that for the LMS system the school uses. And take from that, there are police departments and law enforcement agencies that need to be able to record interviews. There are law firms that need to take depositions and corporations that need to record meetings for compliance and training purposes. And let's be clear, very few, very few of these people are media professionals. They're not trained to manage large production switchers and broadcast systems. So what they're going to need is a simple system with complex features. That's my oxymoron of the day, simple and complex. A system that can, with the fewest buttons possible, present the information and not get in the way. I mean, imagine being a student and being giving a test online when you've never used a computer before. I mean, the computer would be a distraction to the actual test, the content that matters. So on today's show, we're gonna show you how to get the tech out of the way so that the user can focus on the goal at hand, which is to teach, gather data, inform, present, all on today's episode of On The Bench Live, our inaugural On The Bench edition. All right, we're back. Hope that was as fun for everybody as it was for me. I love pushing the buttons. Okay, we got um, a lot to do today because we're going through some product. We're doing hands-on with the product. We're going to show you how to set it up, how to make it work, how to do all the fun things. Um, in addition to that, we have to do a PowerPoint because it wouldn't be a web broadcast if you didn't do a PowerPoint. So we're going to jump right into the PowerPoint and get that out of the way as quick as possible because nobody should dwell there very long. Okay, so here's the product we're talking about. It is the LC200 from Lumens. It is a... I don't want to give it a label because it does so many things. Let's not focus on giving it a label. Um, we will show you it in real. Actually, here, let's do that first. Let's show you just so you get a perspective of how big this thing really is. This is it sitting right here on my desk. There's my hands. There's the buttons. Okay, it's, it's not a giant beast by any measure, but you're going to be amazed, I think, once we get into what this thing can do for the size it is and what it presents. Okay, so content at its simplest. Um, oh, wrong keyboard. All right, we got too many keyboards today. Okay, so I, I dubbed this the appliance approach. I love appliances, especially in my kitchen. They make my life better. I'm a huge fan of the Instapot. Um, whenever I can do a bunch of things in one, uh, it just saves me time and energy, right? So that's what this box is all about, doing a lot in a small amount of space. So as you can see, recording, live streaming, switching, mixing, build it all into one. And this is not the only product that does this, but I think what we're gonna see is it does it really, really simply right and makes it really easy to use okay so basic features for 1080p inputs 
Um, and as you can see on the back panel there, there are four HDMI inputs and two HDMI outputs. There are four audio inputs and an audio output. There is USB for connecting external drives, keyboard mice, that type of thing. And there are those little green boxes on there. Those are serial ports. We have both a 232 and a 485 serial port on this. We're going to talk about those later because they offer some really cool function. Um, we're going to get into the um, Ethernet port because that's how we play with this and then power. That's it. Really simple. When you look at the front panel, um, you've got buttons there to control everything. Now, as far as inputs go, we have the four HDMI, but also supports IP and NDI HX. We've talked a lot about NDI over the past couple weeks, how it makes production easier how it makes us connecting to devices easier, right? So the NDI is in the box to continue that theme as well as traditional RTMP, so we can pull other encoders into this as well, but the baseband fields as well. Five channels of record, this one's really key. So I can record all my cameras or my inputs and ISO those, so I get independent um, video clips of each of those, and I get the program feed that we're gonna generate out of this. So if it's a training lab, a virtual lab, something where we wanna see multiple cameras, here you go three channels of streaming. So I don't have to choose between Facebook, YouTube, and the LMS like Panopto, Kaltura, or whatever it may be. I get to do all three. Um, makes it really fun, really easy. And then built-in PTZ control that my head is in the way of. Um, there we go, moving on, moving on. Um, Interface-wise, you get front panel and um, virtual GUI. So you've got two different ways to interact with this um, based on how you wanna control it and what you're gonna do. And then we can also do custom content layouts. Dig these, we're gonna show you those as well. Web-based content review. Look, everything is all fine and well, but somehow, some way, you've got to get the content out of the box. We're going to show you how that's done, how you can look at the content, how you can deal with metadata entry. So putting metadata around this, because again, we talked about those LMS systems. We need to be able to take information and bring them into those. Um, and internal storage. This does have a hard drive inside. Um, and so we're utilizing that hard drive to manage the content and uh, another feature that I really like is the ability to publish to external systems. So we're going to talk about, again, that, that goes to how do we get the content out and push it elsewhere. And that's why this slide, so that's kind of a breakdown of everything I just said, but I, would, I really want you to look at the, the logos down there, right? I mean, those are the key piece. It's the, you know, YouTube integration, Facebook Live, live stream, Vimeo integration, Twitch, Wowza, Panopto, Opencast, Kaltura, Wirecast, Vmix. You know, any NDI enabled device can play can submit content to this if it's NDIHX, but of course we can plug this into all those platforms and you know utilize them simultaneously. Um, we get so a couple of neat features here. There is a one terabyte drive built into it. We can also plug via this front panel here a USB drive, so we can record directly to that drive. We have the ability to push content out via FTP, and then coming very soon is SMB feature as well, so we can mount localized storage like an Evo and be able to submit that content right into the Evo for our editors and our content producers to work with. Uh, interface wise, uh, yeah, we talked about what's on the back panel, but there's those serial ports for 232 and 485, both included. This goes really nicely with the announcement today um, that the cameras um, from Lumens are now uh, Extron enabled. They have now have the ability to control those cameras. This too has a full API. And this is one of the rarities in, in sort of the production world that you get a device that has serial API so that we can control this device via our Crestron or AMX or Extron, right? We can start and stop records, start and stop streams, choose layouts, switch content and manage even the backgrounds and the effects that we put over the top of this all externally um, from another control system. So again, this goes back to the theme of simplifying the production to get out of the way of the person doing the work right or presenting um okay so we're going to go through the interfaces how to manage it how to use it how to add content to it we're really going to start this thing from the ground up and, and work our way up accessories that you might want to think about if it's an environment where you might have a teacher managing it or a, a student um, or you know a, a camera operator or secondary operator you can have a full-size joystick controller for the cameras along that lines if necessary. And let's talk about some use cases. You need to know where this thing goes. So, you know, right out of the gate, we have a client take this and put this into an experience room where they've got multiple cameras pointed at a person using technology and they're monitoring and managing how that person is using the technology. They're looking at where they're stumbling and what their face is doing and how frustrated they are by the app. So it's a, it's a great um, option for that because we get the individual records plus a composite of those records and they can take all that data and review it later and not have to sacrifice anything. 
and you can see a control room, interview room, there's glass and a one-way mirror, a uh, one-way window in the middle of it. Um, you know, other optional places, or I think popular places are obviously gonna be lecture halls. You know, when we talk about higher ed and their use of Kaltura and Panopto and, and you know, the LMS systems, the fact that this integrates with those is super awesome. Yes, that's my word of the day, super awesome. Um, How's the worship? I mean, simplifying the ability, if you don't have a big staff, for somebody to hit the minimum amount of buttons to get online and get streaming and have the ability to you know, switch between different content pieces. Um, inside of corporate world, I mean, I think the corporate, corporate environment is key for this because we, we've got meetings and training, all the stuff that needs to be recorded and captured, but we don't always have a staff that's there to facilitate it. So with this, anybody can use it. In fact, we're gonna teach my mom how to use it later this afternoon. Um, okay, and then uh, education, right? Now getting down into maybe lower education in high school, the ability for the teacher to manipulate multiple cameras, bring in sources, and especially now that we're streaming online, I mean, who knows in the next year or two, how many classes are gonna stay remote? And so giving the teacher better tools to work with in that regard, right? Medical is another opportunity. Again, I think the multi-camera capture and the ability to record multi, um, you know, all those different angles are gonna be key to that and to be able to pull that back in. Um, and then be able to review it after the fact, which we're gonna talk about. Now, if you get the black screen, that means we've hit the end of our PowerPoint. Be happy, I am. Uh, let's get that off screen. Okay, let's jump into the product for a minute. And I'm gonna get the black screen off first. So, okay, there are two different ways to interact with the product. Um, obviously, the number one is via the internal GUI, where by plugging a mouse and keyboard into it. We're gonna jump into that in a second. But I need to, before we go there, we're actually going to jump into the web-based interface because there's some things we need to change on it. Uh, let's get you out of the way. There we are. There we are. Okay, so we need to log into this. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Hold on, stop the, ah, that's what's blocking me. You have to tell PowerPoint to stop presenting. Doesn't like to not be in control. Okay, now we can go live. All right, let's get PowerPoint out of the way and let's get to the GUI. Okay, so this, when you plug the unit into the network and it hits the network, this is what you're greeted with. You've got a single web page to log in. Um, please don't share my password if you just saw me type it in. Um, it gives you the ability to manage the unit remotely to set it up, to configure it. So when we dive into sort of the feature set here, we can see how it is on the network. We can check its firmware. Yes, I'm up to date. Uh, we can understand its display. Uh, and additionally, we have the ability to create accounts within this and, and throw some layers. So a user might only need to access content or a user might only want to use the mouse and keyboard. And then we have an admin who might be able to do all of that. So we can put usernames and passwords. We need to give it sources. Um, so we need to jump into our network device manager. I'm going to throw these away momentarily. And we're going to show you. Now, I've got obviously one item plugged directly into the unit. Via, well, it wasn't obvious, I'll tell you. I've got one HDMI plug into it. But I'm going to go ahead and tell it to scan the network and look for NDI and IP cameras. Um, because we got to make it easy, right? So it's out pulsing the network right now and it's saying who's out there. In a second, it's going to come back with three. Awesome, we're gonna log into these because we have control over which cameras are being viewed. Good, authenticate me. Perfect, let's get logged in with all of them. Not unlike watching paint dry, I am aware of the irony. But y'all wanted it in real time. Show you how easy it is, so we're doing it. Uh, we don't need you right now. Thank you, come again, okay. I just authorized three cameras to be used by my system. We'll come back to that in a quick minute, uh, but we now have content available to be used. Um, now, when I jump down to the video tab here, I've got the ability to set how we record. And I mentioned earlier, we have choices. So we can either record all the content, meaning all four sources, plus the, the master that we make out of it, or we can just record one of them, right? So we've got the choice over which one's gonna be. We can do loop recording, so like that 24 seven until the hard drive fills up, and we can preferentially choose the, the front panel USB. So if a, a user walks into the room and says, I, I don't want this to hit the hard drive, I want this to go on my drive and it goes away with me, they plug that in and we make sure that that is chosen. Um, 
We can even uh, prefix some of the, the naming conventions. When it comes to streaming, I mentioned earlier, three channels of streaming. Um, and these are just standard RTMP. Uh, you can see we've got some built-in Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, streaming, no problem there. Um, but And you've got the ability to do three simultaneous streams so that we don't have to make choices over who we're giving up or use a restream service if necessary. All right, scenes are really key, right? Because we, we wanna create content and add graphics to it and put backgrounds behind it and layer it together. And we want it to be easy. So first off, you see overlays. And I've got the ability to import overlays into the system. These are PNGs with an alpha channel if necessary, depending on how you want it. I've already imported some. I've also done some background plates that we can play with. And then we've got these themes. These theme, these scenes, I should say, are what's tied to the front panel here. So these are, if a user is going to come in and just use the buttons, these are the buttons that are going to affect. And we can make changes to these. And maybe we want to rearrange the content on them. So if I go ahead and choose this one, we edit it. I can redefine what graphic overlay is being used. So I'm going to put my handy dandy new title on there. I can change the layout that's being seen. I do like this layout, we're gonna keep it. And I can change the background plate. Let's go ahead and change the background plate to that one. Hit apply, done. I've now got a button aligned. That's the exact layout that I wanna to use today. Looks like I did that layout twice, but that was the fun. All right, so we've got some content generated. We've got our sources brought in. We've done some layers. Uh, now we're gonna jump over to the hard drive. This is where our content is gonna get stored. We're gonna jump through the schedule. I'm just kind of driving you through like the backside of this of how it manages. Now, scheduled settings is really phenomenal. We can actually use an external calendar system to schedule, record streams and events on the box. So that if it's a school environment, we know the classes are gonna happen like clockwork. There's no need for the teacher to actually touch anything, is there? Because they can just come in and the class is automatically gonna happen based on some presets. Backups are key. So we talked about LMS integrations, right? So we need to be able to take the content and push it out of here at the end of the session, along with some metadata, which we're going to talk about later. But we have the ability to do that over FTP and coming soon SMB. Um, so the content can either be done on a daily basis, scheduled, or right after a recording. So as soon as the recording button stops, content gets pushed out to our LMS system um, and it's ready to go. Really, really easy stuff there so again not all this is done we've got our content we got our layouts kind of preserved let's get into the actual usage of the system so we're gonna go ahead and switch screens again so now i'm going to take you into the actual gui that's being presented on the front of this box i gotta hit another button first there we go coming in all right Okay, we're in the interface now. So right out of the gate, we're, we're, we're greeted with a couple different configuration panels. So these are again, same thing, how are we recording, how are we streaming, but that was already set up earlier via the web GUI. File manager, we're gonna come back to it at a later time. We don't need to worry about it right now. That's how we view the content later. The director is where we're gonna spend the bulk of our morning. Now, let's get a different layout up on screen. Okay, so we've got four channels of content over here on the left side. So these are our sources. And then we've got our program screen, which is what's going out live to our audience on the other side. So first things first, we got to choose some content. So I've got some cameras ready, because I already assigned them to this system. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my cameras. Um, those are IP cameras. And then I've got my HDMI inputs, I think number three. Wiki Wiki Peter. There we go. Okay, my computer is awake again. It fell asleep because it got bored. All right, so we got our uh, PowerPoint coming in as well. And then for the fun of it, I grabbed another camera, which is somewhere else entirely. Um, and that is Happy Folsom, California out in the, my office window. Uh, we got that. Okay, so we've got our sources are now in the system and we need to start deciding how we're going to use them. So first thing first, we, we're gonna go to our record here. We can set up, okay, we've got our recording already configured, so we need to turn it on and start the record session. If our streaming encoders are set up, we can start the stream as well. I do not I have mine configured right now because I don't wanna slam the network. So we're gonna leave that. So we're now recording and you can see here, we got a snapshot button, smile. We just took a photo and we'll save that for later. Okay, audio wise, remember four inputs of audio, now, currently, these are tied to line in. So they can either be embedded in the HDMI stream, a mic or a line input on a little jack back here. 
Good news is I just got from the factory an update that you'll be able to see IP sources soon as well if they're embedded in the IP stream of the camera. So we got you know some some nice features coming there. We also have some options of being able to split audio coming. So there's lots of cool upgrades coming to this based on user feedback as we get more and more interaction with this. You got some basic faders here where you can control the uh, the loudness of this thing. There we are. Let's turn that one down. All right, we're good to go there. We've got our video set. We started recording. Now we're going to jump over to scenes. Okay, so content-wise, right now I've just got a single camera up. So if we jump to our layout here, I can switch between my cameras. So I might be presenting this angle here. I might want to jump back to my presentation and send that out. And at any point here, we may determine that we want to throw an overlay up. Uh, I hear my little station bug in the upper right-hand corner there, my title. Uh, we've got all this content. Now, there's a limitation on the number of graphics you can bring in currently. That, too, is going to change in the coming months um, as, you know, this thing becomes uh, more featured. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that at a later date. But there isn't a determinate number yet on how many layers uh, or how many graphics you can be able to have. And then we've got background plates as well. But those only matter if we do a different layout. So let's jump down and choose something different. I like this one. One and three. I like one and three. Okay, so now I've got on my screen going out to my audience, my camera on one side and the presentation on the other. And now those overlays are gonna get more fun because let's throw the title up of the person presenting and let's put a background plate behind this. Okay, so with a matter of clicks, without being a super professional here, we put together what our presentation is going to look like, right? And now we're ready to stream it or record it or send it out to the audience. However, we talked about scenes earlier, which are predefined layouts. And so we can recall those scenes um, very, very quickly and jump through these. And we can also change the content going into these scenes. So here's one that we've already built. However, I want to change this camera here in the in the right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flip that to HDMI 3. And you can see, boom, right there, live on air. We've now flipped those over. Actually, I did that backwards. I really should have gone with, uh, no, no, no. let's go with this one down there and my presentation here because it's on the top menu. So as we're talking about this particular product, uh, we can absolutely see that camera live on air at the same time. So you can see it's very, very easy to manipulate the data. Now the scenes that you see here on the screen that we can switch through are the ones that are tied to the front panel down here. So if I find my buttons, which they're backwards to me right now, I can switch the content that is live on air with just the flick of a button. And I can use those scenes that we pre-built um, very, very easily. And we can even change the content from this front one as well. So it's a very simple system to tie in and start to present content with. All right, so we've got a show, we're manipulating our cameras. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these back to normal. I, let's take it to a four by four. I like this one better. We can get all our content up at once. I know I want this camera here, that camera there. There's all my four. Now, as far as cameras go, you need to be able to control them. And there's a couple of different ways. We showed the PTZ controller earlier that you can throw on this and have a third party operator. What if I want to run it right here in the interface or tie it to presets and soon to come macros? All right, so let's jump to channel four and let's see what's going on on the street. One of my favorite restaurants right there across the street. It doesn't look like anybody's eating yet. Everybody is doing their job and staying at home and staying separated. So we've got camera control. We can manage the camera, zoom speed, pan still, tilt, all that. We can also create presets uh, and have these presets. Oh, this one's going to zoom way in. This has got a 30, uh, 30 optical on it, so it's, it's shooting in there. Uh, and it's struggling to focus. It's all right. What else do I got preset wise? But as you can see, again, very, very easy to build presets, store those presets and manage your cameras right here from the interface. All right, so we've created a layout, we've created a presentation, we're streaming that presentation out, we're recording that presentation. Because we pre-built those layouts, we were able to just press a couple of buttons on the front, like the start and stop record, the, uh, you know, the layout, make it very, very easy to do. Let's stop our record for a minute. Now, 
let's go look at the other side of the story, which is once our presentation is over, how do we access this content and what do we do with it? So I'm gonna jump out to home. Now, if I'm in front of the unit, I can come to the file manager here, and I now can see the content, well, live, that's happening right now. Um, but in addition to that, I wanna take a look at content we previously recorded. So let's take a look at this session right here. Nope, this session right here. Let's turn the live off. Okay, so here is a recording that was made. Oh, this is a great one. This is a great example of a student working, uh, doing a showcase of a podcast where she was showing how to record a podcast. She was showing the software and multiple angles as she did it. I got permission on this one. She's my daughter. She had no choice. She has to be in this. Um, we can preview that. We can jump to any of the individual camera angles and look at those. Very, very easy. And if we want to go see the recordings that we just made, let's have a look at that one. There we go. Oh. Oh, I went the wrong way, didn't I? I want to go up here. That was the recording we just made. There's today's date. All right, all right, there I am. And I can continually jump through these as well and view the different angles that we recorded. So very easy to come back, take a look at the content, stream that content out or play it back. We can refine by date if we want, look at schedules that we've previously done. Now you can see here, we got the ability to delete content, back content up and copy it out to USB. So there again, that option to have a local record, plus a, you know, a walk away record. So to be able to copy that over and move it out. That's all from this interface if you're right in front of the GUI. Let's get out of this GUI and talk about how we might integrate this with your LMS system. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the other system. And we're gonna go back to the screen cap. Okay, so we're back inside of the web GUI. Again, I love this web GUI because I don't have to be in front of the box. I can be managing this system remotely from anywhere out there. Um, so let's have a quick look here. Now up here in the upper right hand corner, there's that little play media button. We're going to jump into that one. and It's going to take us into a very similar GUI to the last one. We've got now we can see all our content recordings that were made earlier today, recordings that were made previously. Here's my favorite show. It is the uh, Sheldon versus um, uh, who's that? Optimus Prime playing Exploding Kittens show. Now, as you can see, the, the camera is rolling right now, or the, the, the screen is rolling. And at any point, I can jump between angles and the playhead isn't moving. So if I'm going back some, from a compliance standpoint or a session, and I want to change the angle of view from my record, I don't have to find that moment in time again, because as I move between angles on this one, the playhead stays where it was. And so it's, it becomes a great tool for going back and reviewing footage with students um, in training sessions to be able to go back and look at how they were operating. And we can see there's our quad split. So in this case, I was recording the interface plus a couple cameras, all good stuff. Now at any point in here, so let's jump over to this lesson. Uh, we've got the content. We need to put an organization. This is Sierra Middle School. We're gonna add department, uh, media production. The event date was the 2020-11. All right, and semester spring. Oh, soon to be spring. Topic level, so as you can see, we're adding metadata to this. That metadata gets applied to all those assets. And at a later point, when we publish these assets out of the application here and into the LMS system, that metadata is gonna follow over so that we know that we've got all that content for later, right? Okay, we're just checking the, uh, oh yeah, we did the product, record review, we're reviewing content. Oh, let's look at still images. Um, so we've got that content review. We can also look at our still images. I think we made a snapshot earlier. There it is, booyaka. So again, very, very easy to record content in the system and make sure that we've got that system accessible to us after the fact. Um, let's see, what else? So hard drive internally, we hit the ability to playback media, control the system, manage multiple units on the network. You can actually copy settings from unit to unit once you've got them configured. In addition to that, there are some new features coming that I actually wanna share with you next. So let's, uh, yeah, we're going back to slideshow. Sorry, people. So lots of new features coming. We talked about the Extron announcement just happened today for control of the API for the cameras and then the API 
built into this system so you can control it from anybody's control system. This little control surface here, this little remote control panel, I'm really excited about. Um, this is releasing here shortly and it's basically going to be an accessory that you can mount on a wall on a table wherever you want to put it i envision this one for if it's a police department in, in an interview room that this is outside the room and as they walk in they tap the plate and now they're recording and their camera is preset to the right location but you can see there's a flash drive um, you know a drive port a usb port so we can plug in a drive and do that automated recording to the external drive you've got some macros there for presetting camera positions uh, layers, graphics, whatever it may be. You've got a backup, so when you're done, you hit the button, it's gonna back up to the USB drive if it wasn't configured to automatically record to the USB drive, and you can start your stream and start your start your recording. So all that control in a very simple interface, because this might be in a podium, so that the, you know, the teacher, professor, the lecturer comes in, and rather than trying to figure out how to use the system, they just hit the macro button, and that gets them up on the screen, that gets everything fired up, that starts the stream, starts the record. Very, very simple way to use the system. Comes in two sizes, wrong keyboard. Um, it, it, USB, so it's got a limitation of 98 feet from the processor. Um, it's going to plug directly in. You can mount this on a wall table or lectern, um, as we talked about. It's uh, standard um, wall plate size, um, so it'll fit in all those. A couple of ways this might get look, you know, you might look at it in a couple of different fashions here um, with your cameras, your controller, everything plugged into the LAN. This plugged in as well. We've got some basic integrations that can be fired off of this. It's a really, really cool add on to what I think is an already super functional appliance. And I'm excited about this. All right, let's check to make sure wall play, presentation, web GUI, LMS. We're getting all the stuff out today and we're kind of early. So with that being said, that is the LC200. Um, it is a very easy to use. And again, I didn't want to put a label on this. We said this earlier, it's more than lecture capture. It's more than compliance recording. It's more than switching streaming recording. It does a lot in a single little chassis. Um, and that's what it is. Okay, so we're going to open it up for questions. Let's see if there's any lingering out there. Um, rack mount, yes, there are ears on either side. This will rack mount, absolutely. No problem there. Quality of five recorded channels. So they are H.264 streams. They're running at 1080p 30 if you're running five of them. If you um, dub down to just the mix only, you get 1080p 60 on that. Web GUI for control two, uh, coming, uh, I wanna say later this year. Um, the web GUI control will be there. That is a uh, feature set that is on its way. Can use the control system to choose a streaming location. So are we uh, asking from here or from an external? So the API, yes, would allow you to inject that data and choose which of the uh, encoders you want to power up and power on or, or you know, where those are going, but that is built into the API. And I would recommend anybody who's a Crestron, AMX, Extron, anybody who's in the programming side, go on the website and download the API document that's now available, and it will give you a really good breakdown of all the things you can do, including like swapping backgrounds and, and pulling up graphics. It's got a lot. Uh, real up, uh, real time update for lower thirds. Um, nah, only from the only if you're changing them from the interface. You could externally control them and update them, but if you're uploading them on the fly, uh, somebody would still have to choose them. Um, you know, from the you know from one of the interfaces. Are all the sources recorded only multi viewer scene view. Uh, yeah. So in, in the, so the question was, are all the sources being recorded or only the multi view scene view? So if we jump back to our other screen, to our control panel screen here. Let's jump into that one. And we're gonna look at the file manager. Uh, so once again, yeah, in a session, we have the choice of either choosing just the mix feed, so just the actual program feed, or we can choose each of the, in the we can choose, tell to record all five of the sources. So all of the you know, incoming content as well. The NDI scan converter. Um, scan converter. Okay, so there's a question: Is can you record NDI scan converter to bring in laptops as network sources? As of this time, no, because scan converter is full NDI, and this is just looking for NDI HX feeds. 
Um, whether that changes in the future, I can't tell you, um, but as of right now, no. So any traditional laptops, anything like that, you would want to bring in over HDMI. Laptop monitor only, or can the external monitor be added for multi-view? Oh, um, yeah, so um, on the output of this, there are two outputs, um, one for multi-viewer and one for program feed. So we're utilizing both of those to go out to the external system, so I can show you both of them. So the interface, this uh, one interface here, Let's look at it. Ta -da. This interface is actually being driven directly off of the unit itself. So that is coming out one the multi-view report on the product. So if we go back in the director and we're plugged in with a local mouse and keyboard running this system right, uh, right from there. And then the other output is a clean, is basically just the program feed. So if we look at that one, I've got it here. Oh, there it is. And this is just the program feed. Oh, no, that wasn't it. Sorry. There it is. That is the program output, the actual mixed output that you were seeing on the screen a second ago. If we look at all three of those side by side, they look like this. So there is our multi viewer output and our uh, mixed feed. And me, don't hold, don't hold it against me. Oh, uh, let's see. IP audio sources is Dante. Um, as of right now, Kurt, no, no Dante support. Um, they're IP streams that are embedded in the NDI or in the IP stream. Um, so they're not attaching to Dante at this point. Are we going to see, hey, John, I'm in a webinar right now. Could you call me back later? Yeah, thanks. Um, let's see. So are we going to see the product actually streaming to Facebook or YouTube live? No. Um, I mean, we can. I can set up an external one and we can start streaming. But um, unfortunately, no, I just um, wasn't in the place to set it all up today. So but anytime you want to see it, I can put it online and stream to the company Facebook or YouTube and you can actually see it live. Can you schedule what scene is being used for recording? Yes, that is in the API. So you can actually, um, and that will be part of the macro as well. So you can fire off a macro, which is going to pull scene, graphics, background, and um, start and stop the record. MIDI control integration, um, not MIDI, no, um, just through the uh, serial API. I had a question about comparing it to Wirecast. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we did a Wirecast demo a couple of days ago. I think some of you may have been on that one. I've seen some of the same names. And I think you saw the complexity of setting up a Wirecast system. We, we tried to make it as easy as possible to show you how fun it is to get into Wirecast and set up a presentation. And I would say this takes that down even simpler, right? Because what we're talking about is a non-media professional walking in and hitting a button and having all the, the defined workflow kind of preset and ready to go so that it's taking this away from needing to be a you know a trained operator to somebody who can push a button and that's the biggest difference does do they both stream yes do they both record yes um does wirecast offer tons of layers of graphic and unlimited sources yeah that's where the big differentiators this is limited to four simultaneous incoming feeds at once um it limited to three streaming encoders and the different recording parameters whereas wirecast if you build a bigger system, you can do more with it, right? From that perspective. But we're really, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing these two work together. I'm not seeing them um, necessarily competing because I think the the audience that wants an appliance with simple buttons to start and stop their event or their show are looking at a slightly different build. A uh, question about green screen ability. No, definitely not. Uh, MIDI via USB. Uh, no, I do not believe so. We can look into that. Yes, Don, that was Marley and Moo. You can come up anytime and eat there. Um, you know, come hang out. I mean, not that, you know, we're, 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 we so we would have to stay across the table from each other. Um, can metadata be added when it is scheduled also? So not at this time. That is a feature that's coming. Um, you can obviously do some work in the met, um, with the name and the schedule and how that data is flowing. Um, so it can be actually, you can define the name of the file and most LMS systems can base information off that particular data there. But the um, coming soon is metadata in the schedule. Front panel lockout, uh, not at this time, but that is a great feature request. I will push that up. Guys, if, you, if you're watching uh, over at Lumens, front panel lockout. Good, all right. Ah, thank you. 
I hope, for joining. Love it. Uh, MSRP. Oh, what would we ask? Um, I want to say $39.95, but I'm not positive. We'll um, we'll put that in the show notes afterwards. In July-ish. Uh, Paul, was that a reference to the panel? The panels are coming in July, the little uh, control panels. Longest runtime before. Oh, great. Love this one. Longest runtime before reboot. This is not a Windows appliance. Enough said. Um, so I typically keep this one on almost 24-7. I rarely shut it down. Um, uh, it is a, you know, I would say from an OS standpoint, this is a Linux kernel. This is not a Windows or a Mac-based traditional PC. So we're not seeing the need for this to be reboot. You can schedule and you can remotely reboot it, which is a great feature set. So if you were running these kind of spread out across the campus, you could set that up via the API and do some of that. But ideally, yeah, that's not not going to be a major issue here. Do you accept new tech NDI IP standards? We do um, if it's NDI HX. So again, this one only supports HX. And as of right now, HX1, not HX2. Um, but this that is the uh, the current is NDI HX only um, from new tech. Hope that answered Ken. Uh, can record all channels individually and then go back and cut cameras and utilize macros in post. Ooh, good question. Can you record all channels individually, then go back and recut them, um, you know, and post that out? Not in the box, no. So we're just gonna we're gonna give you those files and then you can drag those right into Premiere or whatever editorial application you want to use and edit them there. But yeah, this once they're recorded, that that's sort of it. You're locked on that program. Um, you would do your editing externally. Without MIDI USB, best method for hotkeys. Um, well, the hotkeys are built right into the front. So there was a question without MIDI kind of external control support, what's the best method for hotkeys? So it's gonna be APIs over you know, a control system. It's gonna be utilizing the front panel inputs, or it's going to be um, utilizing the new little control module, the external control interface. Those would be your options for doing hotkeys at this time. Thank you, Jamie. King, uh, no king, uh, really, again, we're, we're kind of breaking down production on this to be simple, 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 adding a quick layer, mixing between sources. Again, we're, the product I think is really aimed at the non-media professional, the person that isn't going to want to do really crazy graphics and, and crazy production. That's where Wirecast and New Tech fits that. So think about you know the, the professional that needs to record, switch, manage a presentation. That's where this product is really going to be key. Yes, hi-ho, I will send you all the questions later. Um, panel, the, okay, yeah, so panel at the end of the month. Thank you, Paul, for being in the chat. Um, MSRP, I just got it from my team because I'm horrible with numbers. I'm just a nerd. Uh, 38.99 MSRP on this. Can only IP cameras be controlled by the LC channel or can other cams like? Oh, interesting. Okay, so here's a great question. Can only IP cameras, IP cameras be controlled by the LC200 or can other cams like the VCA50P be controlled? So, um, Kelly, these are the VCs, um, the VCs um, that you're seeing right here. These are the A50s um, and these are being um, controlled. Because they're network-based cam uh, cameras, we can control them from here and we can use an external control system simultaneously because they can accept IP commands from multiple devices on the network. So you could have a standalone operator, you could have your operator here. We can run serial out to a camera if it's an older camera that doesn't, you know, that, uh, in fact, I think that is, if, if I jump into camera control, that is a feature to determine what how that camera is going to be controlled. But um, yeah, so as of, as of right now, IP cameras from this box or from external controllers. Do all the media files have mixed audio on them or only the program recorded? Um, so the program has the mixed audio and the uh, individual ISOs will have their audio in them. And then that is a feature, um, that is an, uh, a future upgrade that's coming to determine which audio feed gets recorded on which channel. So that the ability to kind of redefine your audio uh, mixing is coming in a future release. Okay, so good question. With reduced NDI and a remote laptop without HDMI, what's the best way to input PowerPoints? Um, NDI laptop without, oh, without HDMI. Um, 
get a converter? I, yeah, I, I, um, without HDMI, I mean, I'm assuming it has DVI, it's got DisplayPort, if it's got DisplayPort on it. Um, it's rare that I see a laptop in the field that only has VGA anymore, but if it's got DisplayPort or any of the other features, then that's how I would get your content in. Um, you know, and you could easily get a dongle or a cable that flips that from DisplayPort, DVI, over to an HDMI. Uh, USB device format, right now it's formatted by, um, by the box here. Um, XFAT's coming, it's FAT32 currently. Is your PowerPoint use the beginning available? Oh, the PowerPoint. Um, so somebody was asking about the PowerPoint we use the beginning. Yes, we can make that available. Um, please email the team to get access to it. There is also that PowerPoint was in another webinar that Paul Munoz and I from Lumens did a couple weeks back. That is published and available as of right now. So if you just want to go through the PowerPoint and not see the demo, um, then we can do that. Um, but we have we have lots of options. Um, oh, good question. Paul, you, or, or Hi-Ho, you can probably answer this for us. Are only Lumens and NDI cameras supported, and what about other brands? So when we went into the camera uh, setup, there was an option for uh, native cameras, which it already knew how to find, which were NDI cameras or, um, or their own IP cameras. There was also an option for RTSP. So if you have an existing camera that's got RTSP output, you can take control of, uh, or you can bring that camera in. Um, as far as control, I will have to check with um, the team on whether or not we're controlling third party. Um, so please email the, um, or anybody on my team, if you could take that note down, third party cameras, uh, control. PowerPoint via some kind of network for distance input. Um, okay, yeah, just one. So PowerPoint via some kind of network. So being able to, if you're presenting at a distance or if you're not near the box, how to get that PowerPoint presentation in. Uh, ideally, an HD based TE. find for you to solve that problem as well. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll certainly find out. Uh, okay, Paul just chimed in. Um, so as of right now, control is only for the Lumens cameras or, or their OEM version. So the new tech, the Marshall, um, the ones that are using the, the Lumens um, main body, those are the only ones that are controllable through this particular box. You can bring them in. Um, you'd have to use a third-party external controller to move them, though. All right. Oh, hold on. Um, so no NDI update vision, version of a update. Oh, okay, so I think there's a question here to NDI update. So this does get updates. It's still only supporting HX, even with the latest update. I have not seen a um, comment yet on if it's getting HX2. Um, or if it's only going to maintain HX1, my assumption is only HX1. Um, but as of right now, um, that's what we know. Uh, and but it's constantly changing. There's uh, upgrades and software updates being done to this on a monthly basis. So there's always new features coming, um, new options. So we'll have to keep you posted if they're going to do more to NDI than just HX. All right, I think we have exhausted the questions for the hour. I don't see any new. Oh no, nope, I got a new one. Hold on. Stay with me, folks. We got uh, recommend. Oh, recommended uh, recommendation for integration of SDI cameras as a source. Um, for those, absolutely, you're going to have to convert those over to HDMI or to. Um, yeah, actually, really, HDMI is going to be your only option um, because most of the NDI converters on the market are going to be full NDI, not HX. Um, so it's going to preclude those from getting plugged in. But if you if you use a simple USB or uh, HDMI to SDI converter, I used to have one sitting over here. Um, you know, they're not expelling anything. Camera shot for a second. I mean, there's some there's some great little ones on the market that are USB powered that are you know tiny, very inexpensive. That would allow you to convert that over to HDMI to get that into the system. Um, you know, over an HDMI cable. And the good part about that is you can go SDI over the long distance and then just do a short HDMI at that point and not have to, uh, you know, stress out your cable lengths. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so the question was, does it come with standard presets and demographics? It absolutely does. Like this little recording and streaming, there's about five, six graphics in there, a bunch of background plates that come out of the box. So it's immediately demoable and usable. Even the presets are kind of aligned out of the gate with some basic presets that we think most people are going to use. So yeah, right out of the box, this thing is set up. Uh, it takes about a minute to boot up and come online and then you're up and running. Uh, and you, you know, you could be doing a production right away. It, there's no, no slowdown whatsoever on that. Um, so, yep, absolutely. So if it's one of those where you're looking for a demo to show a client or to use for yourself, borrow it. Thank you, Hank. I'm glad you do. Um, that's good. All right. I think, once again, I think we've come to the end of the show where I've exhausted the World Wide Web of questions on this. Um, I think I have a graphic for this next part. Yeah, hold on. There it is. There it is. All right. As always, if you have any questions, there's the digits to call um, and the email address. Use those. It'll get to me um, at some point. But um, this is a really easy system to use. We really want you to take it out and take it for a spin and demo it. So by all means, if you're looking for pricing, availability, uh, more information, there's the number to call. Um, if I was a standard YouTuber, I would say, please click on the follow button and, uh, and track us further, but I'm not, so we won't do anything silly like that. Um, otherwise, it's been fun. It's been real. We've got more webinars coming up. We're going to keep consistent with this over the next couple of weeks because you're stuck at home just like us. So uh, why not pay attention and, and you know learn some new things? Uh, more demos. All the previous webinars are all published now. So if you missed one, I would absolutely say go back and check them out. Um, and there's some great in our JBNA University portal. There's some really great ones there, specifically on Lumens and Christy. And you know, there's lots of stuff that you can do with us right now to um, gain more knowledge on the product. And if all else fails, call me and we'll do a demo for you anytime online. This thing is a lot of fun to show. All right, I'm gonna call this one done. So thank you all for being here. We'll see you on the next episode of On the Bench, the live edition.